Mr. Deck just wanted to bring the school committee briefly up to date on the status of the discussion with the schedule at Hopkins Academy and a potential opportunity for visitors, students visiting Hopkins Academy, possibly for a day. He's still letting this organization, a group of students from Japan. Yeah, uh, we were re on the school vacation by a gentleman named Mark Sherry, who um, works with an organization called PeopleLink, and there are going to be 33 to 35, 16, 15 and 16 year old students from a high school just outside of Tokyo in Japan, who are going to be in the Greenfield area, the Northampton area, um, the week of March 9th to the 14th. And during that time, they wanted to be able to possibly set up some shadows uh, with local schools, reached out to us um, for one or two days. We felt like certainly it would be a benefit to our students to potentially do it for uh, one day. Uh, it might be a little bit more of a challenge to do it for two, uh, logistically. But um, we figured it would be a good experience for our kids as well. Uh, so we're looking into the organization and, and just doing some initial vetting, and I'm hoping to hear back from Mr. Sherry tomorrow to have a conversation with him and have an opportunity to ask some questions about the program. Um, you know, they, they talked about liability and all the other issues that, uh, that we would be concerned about technically. Um, they have taken care of within the group, and we've done a little bit of initial research on the organization during the vacation week last week. So we're hopeful that we'll have some students from Japan um, upwards of about 30, they may cut the group in half to make it more, uh, you know, I will let them know we only have 279 <laughs> students in the whole school. And, that's like you know, a student per kid. Right, that's that's roughly 10% of our entire population, so um, certainly to cut the number in half and, and potentially split with another school would be more than adequate for us to get some exposure and have the opportunity to sit at lunch with some kids and be in classes with some students from the other side of the world. Um, so. Uh, the, the next issue that I just wanted to bring you up to speed on is I'm anticipating that prior to the March school committee meeting that I'll be giving you some information about a proposed change to the schedule, uh, the master schedule for next year that I spoke about in the last school committee meeting. A tweak was added to the schedule um, where we couldn't quite get to the 80% consensus on the faculty uh, and we've arrived at that. We had 23 out of the 29 members of the faculty, um, myself included, just as one vote, where uh, we did arrive at that 80%, and um, we probably used, uh, I would say, upwards of 10 hours of face-to-face -face deliberation over the course of the year, um, as well as online deliberations. Again, Jason Burns and, uh, has done a phenomenal job of the background research, but also between he and Janet Slocum, the tweaking work that they did um, and the work that they did to try to arrive at something that they believe would work better for our students as well as the faculty. Um, and so we'll be bringing that schedule forward and, and it basically moves us from an eight period schedule for the high school to a seven period schedule, which the middle school currently has, but allows us more than anything else to be able to take advantage of um, more rotation and the time of day and learning research so that you know blocks aren't necessarily locked into a particular point of the day. There will still be two stable blocks in the middle of the day as we have a shared staff with David Skelly in the music program. And so there will need to be some stability with his schedule. That also gives us some stability for externships, internships, and other outplacements that we wouldn't have in the other rotating periods. So, um, I will have, you know, if, if there are any questions that you need for me to do research on, um, we hope to be able to get the packet to you or to be able to get information to you so that you can review in advance and have the opportunity to ask questions. I'll also ask uh, Mr. Burns and some other members of the faculty to attend, uh, including hopefully some of those people who had reservations about voting for it so that we get multiple sides of the issue. Um, we're also going to go back um, just after it's approved or not and again, <coughs> sit down with students and, and take a look at through the remainder of the school year using our existing course schedule um, to talk to students about changes that we might be able to make as a faculty not having classes meet every other day at the high school level. <clears throat> and the addition of the time on learning that's inherent in the seven period schedule. Um, the primary reason why the school committee would need to vote on this is moving from an eight period schedule to a seven period schedule would require us to make a change in graduation requirements, where if we didn't have to change the graduation requirements, 
there's no contract violation that we could make the change to the schedule next year, but we do have to change those requirements. So uh, we'll bring it to you for your consideration. And as I said, we'll be prepared for the contingency. If for some reason you don't support the change in graduation requirements, then we'll stay with the current schedule for the following school year and be prepared to adopt either so that you know, the school committee is not put on the school committee pressure in that way. Brian, just a quick question. Is the current, um, the draft schedules that you guys are looking at still within that same start time? Yes. Um, good morning. Okay. Yep. Start times stay the same. Um, one of the issues that we want to be able to, to take a look at, I think, is a resolvable issue, is the, the moving the high school snack period, which is that break period. Right now is a little bit further in the day, but the way that Mr. Burns made adjustments to the schedule based on the student and staff feedback uh, allows us a couple of different spots to put that in. And we gives us the opportunity to actually consult with some students to say, where would you prefer to have this, and get some consensus there as well. And I'm sorry, you said that it, it won't preclude kids from doing internships or work study? Because we'll have two, two stable periods in the middle of the day. So even though it has limitations to it yeah. where they can't do it every period, they couldn't do it every period anyways because they would have had an alternating day schedule unless they were doing it in the G or H period of the final two periods of the day, which meant yeah. every day. Yeah. Um, so even at that, they had alternating days. So now within those periods that they could be stable and other opportunities may exist on a rotating basis, um, which you know, might not be an issue for some of those opportunities as, uh, for example, at the elementary school, despite the fact that, you know, they would like to have some stability in terms of having the students support in their classrooms, mm -hmm. they may be able to work with a contingency of having students rotating around and that may open up an opportunity or two in that schedule. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Okay. Um, I just was wondering, um, so are you saying that Instead of having that every other day long block schedule that they would meet all of their classes during one day? Drop. Uh, students would carry seven and they would meet five each day. So okay. there'd be a drop two. Um, Can I ask that there would be some consideration around homework assignments because a lot of our students here at Hopkins really stress the fact that there's an awful lot of, there's a, there's a very rigorous workload, um, something that we're probably pretty proud of as well. but. Um, and having classes every single day. One thing that I think um, is challenging for students here as well is the amount of workload and the every other day schedule so that if they are having those classes more frequently that other teachers are communicating and saying, okay, well, I'm assigning this test that, you know, you don't have three or four exams in one day or, you know, tests or quizzes, I, you know, it's just yep. a consideration because yeah, I have children over here. I spoke about at the prior meeting, Paula, was yep. that was the opportunity there when we put the, um, put the initial proposal together, we met with 24 students from grades 8 through 12. Um, and Jason Burns and, and Dr. McKenzie led that meeting and just facilitated And The overwhelming majority of students were, they had concerns. There were some things that they saw that were potential benefits, um, but one of their biggest concerns prompted that exact piece, which is that if we have an increased amount of time on learning per class, in particular if we say take an advanced placement course, um, in the alternating block, an advanced placement course doesn't really have enough time to fully cover the curriculum and there's a substantial dependence on independent work. Um, so we're hoping that uh, if this schedule gets approved, that what we want to see is that exact study in the remainder of the year using students to help us because all of the teachers who teach in the alternating periods recognize that they will have to make changes to their existing um, independent work structure um, and hopefully some of those tasks and activities can be moved to the daytime you know during the school day and so hopefully we see a reduction in the workload if nothing else it's going to give us an opportunity to have a discussion about you know that have that conversation about rigor and, and making mm -hmm. sure that um, rigor involves depth uh, of understanding over okay. the weight of the workload right. you know as being the primary the primary driver. So. That's good, yeah. You know, I think it's just a concern for a lot of students in terms of, you know, the, the workload and how that will and how that will change because there has to be a lot of communication among staff. You know, when you're dealing with that many staff who are rotating through that many children, you have to really make sure you're communicating about who is assigning what so that there's not an overload on the children. That's all. Well, yeah, thank you. There we go. Are you healthy? For the first, first time. time. First nice. Time. Good. Thank you. The night's young. <laughs> <laughs>